Hey everybody, I'm Merlin, and this is The Merlin Show. John Vanderslice is a singer, a songwriter, a studio owner, an engineer, uh, a homeowner recently. Uh, he's a man about town here in San Francisco. Uh, makes fantastic indie rock for the Mighty Barsook Records. Uh, and John's been around for a while, from his days in MK Ultra through his uh, excellent media prank regarding uh, the song Bill Gates Must Die up through today. Uh, John has been making great music and finding very interesting things to do with the uh, internet along the way. Like a lot of independent artists today, he's kind of finding his way with what's next in the post-plastic disc age of music. Uh, he's got a lot of interesting ideas that we talk about in this segment. Ben, if you would, please roll our interview with Mr. John Vanderslice. I think I, I first became aware of your music and your whole uh, presence through Tiny yeah. Telephone. Yes. And through, uh, through just your entire web presence. And uh, I, one of the very first things I remember is I learned about Spoon. Yeah. From your site, because you had, we putting up. That's when I used to run the MP3 blog. Yeah. Yeah. But before, I mean, before people knew what MP3s were, yeah. and before anybody knew what a blog was. I was testing the copyright uh, waters oh, a long end? time ago. <laughs> yeah. What, when did you start posting MP3s from your friends' fans? Must have been 1999, 1998. Does that sound about right? That's about the time I discovered. It was around the time of the Bill Gates thing. Yeah, and I and I put up um, some Spoon stuff, some Spoon lives, some very rare B sides that they had. Yeah, again, Mountain of Sound. Yeah. You had maybe had Advanced Cassette. You definitely yeah. had one of the things from the oh, yeah. series of Sneaks. Was I had up. this. I had the B sides from. It was on a, a 30 gallon. Tank yeah. plus three EP that they put it's out. It's an all-time quarterback. Yeah, I had the whole all-time quarterback record, yeah. which I think is really maybe maybe some was, was it Beulah maybe. Yeah, I had Beulah. I had of Montreal. I had some. I had some rare uh, uh, bright eyes stuff. I had some pretty cool. Th you know, at that time it was, you know, there were, it was we were in the cracks. It was pre Napster, and there was a lot of stuff that was missing. You know, you couldn't download it, and a lot of the you know a lot of these records were either cut outs or sold out. And, you no, know, in the case of Spoon, that was when they were on Electra, yeah. and that EP was just not available. So I, that didn't go so well. Yeah, and I mean, it's it, that's a tough, tough gig, you know. It's and it's gotten, to, you know, it's amazing that bands still do that. Yeah. You know, the bands still attempt that. That they move, think they you think know? that's the big brass ring. And it's all going to be okay once they're done. Well, there's maybe it's it's the advance money, you know. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, and I and I and I understand that, man. You get into a corner where. Like, for instance, right now, I would do anything for advance money. I think someone could buy my catalog, for, really? you know, for $20,000. Would it be like, maybe 1500 bucks? you think I could, I could get in the yeah. If I could business? get that check today, today. in my account. No, I, I understand. You know, you get in. I'm in, a, I'm in a really major financial. Aren't you glad this is about my finances, this podcast? No, this is, this is why we're here. But um, I'm in a whole, because the record cycle is unforgiving. You, you don't really make money until the record's out. You know, yeah, maybe you have your back Sometimes catalog. Sometimes still it's not out for a couple of years. Yeah, and that's a that's that's a rough spot because you owe your manager, your label, your recording studio, your engineers, and your players money, and those, you know, you, the that stuff gets paid back when you go on tour. I mean, the main thing is that you don't have tour. You know, you start slowing down touring as you're recording. So, right. So I understand why people make that deal. Yeah, I mean, there's there's. It's so funny, there's so many analogies for this. The, the analogy for a lot of my friends, actually a friend of mine that you met today, uh, is, is people whose businesses have attracted attention from people who want to invest in them. Yeah. And uh, they're increasingly, a lot of my friends are saying, you know what, I do not want venture capital money because yeah. it gives them too much influence in what we do. Of course, and it yeah. changes the direction. Yeah. And in some ways I think about it a lot, like, like getting signed to a Absol fairly large Absolutely. Family. But it's like, how do you, on a certain level, how do you turn that down? It's if somebody from, the label that put out all of your favorite bands in the 90s yeah. comes along and wants to sign you, what are you going to say? You know? Well, the thing is, is that as with any business decision, you have to think about what that's going to mean five, eight years from now, because that stuff, you know, if you're a career artist, then you, you have to think about the next 15 years, you know what I mean? And that's, when you sign an 80-page contract, there are certain things that are, you know, certain rights that you're right. giving up, and, and certainly... I mean, you could just look at what's going to happen to your, your, you know, your internet presence, you know, when you sign over to a major label. I, I remember clearly, I, we were on tour with um, Sunny Day Real Estate, and they signed to a major, and SunnyDayRealEstate.com overnight went to the label, and the website. That was part of the deal. Yeah. Now I don't know, wow. you know, of course deals can be structured in any any way in these days, and who right. knows what you give up, but you're going to be giving up a lot. But somebody no like what. somebody like Death Cab for Cutie is probably the exception rather than the rule. 
well, somebody who can negotiate a really something that is good for everybody. De Death Cab went in selling over 500,000 records. They have an enormous amount of, uh, of, of leverage in those deals. So what happens with Death Cab is going to be a real exception. You know what I mean? Like most bands going signing with a multinational you know, corporation are not going to have that, that kind of pull. You know? Right. It's, it's interesting, though, because I, I, like I say, you, you were really ahead of the curve, probably in a way you couldn't have understood at the time. But the whole idea of... No, I understood. Oh, you understood? <laughs> I you, knew, you knew even then what you were doing no. to change the industry. No. No, I mean, it was Thank a small... Thank you, John yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, it was an opening. But keep, keep going, keep going. Uh, but nowadays, uh, MP3 blogs are... Cliché would be an unkind word, but there's so many of them that it's easy to lose track of the time that a guy with a shared hosting account could ask his friends, can I go put your MP3 on my site? And they might go, what's an MP3? Yeah. I mean, probably not most not of them, only that, but I, even up to 99, 99 is when I, I started doing that. I was getting killed from the labels. Okay, for instance. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Like, I Did Electra bug you about the Spoon stuff? Oh, yeah. Of course. Oh, they had to. Oh. Lafitte got you on the phone. And yeah. Every, what the guy's name? Yeah, yeah that, that's, uh, actually, it's, um, it's uh, God, what was her name? Sylvia. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Sylvia was the, I think she was then president of, and that's that song, you know, Sylvia. Yeah. Oh, Sylvia. Um, the... Yes, it wasn't just the majors that bugged me, it was everybody. I mean, Matador and Sub Pop and, you know, often... All, all our little friendly, fuzzy... Well, that was a scary time, labels. though, for labels. Now, I think labels have given up now. They, they've, they've almost... Some of them understand that they've, they've, they're, they're... If you get featured on one of those big MP3 blogs... Yeah. I mean, well, bands like Clap Your Hands say, yeah, I mean... <laughs> We, can you arguably say that between like Pitchfork and MP3 blogs, that's where I, a lot I, of that groundswell comes I, from? I think that, like for instance, yes. And and I'll and to 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 back up that point, we're putting out a record in August. We do not. We are not authorizing one dollar for print advertisements on the record rollout. Like me and my the guys that were kind of my manager and my bandmates and people who are really working on the record. We've kind of come up with this idea. I mean, it has to be different. Things have changed. Things have changed in the past three months. So, print advertising, biggest waste of money in the world. Trying to pitch to spin a Rolling Stone, who cares? Who gives a shit? No, can we cuss on this thing? Rolling Stone review. Are we allowed to cuss? Sure. Yeah, okay. we'll zip it. The, um, but that was that Rolling Stone review. Was that the one where they talked about your lo fi production? Yes, yeah. The low, it was yeah. like, well, I'm glad I went to all the trouble of trying to get a Rolling Stone. Well, You're somebody who's. who's well, the thing is, is that not, I mean, that's part of it. Not only is it... That one me. It's, it's, we still have that one on our fridge. It's, 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 so a, it's a hundred word, you know, yeah. that's something you call your mom. Mom, I got reviewed in Rolling Stone. And then she calls you back and says, this is, I mean, this is, uh, you know, completely, it's a hundred words. Who cares? Yeah. And also, it's, um, it's totally inaccurate. It's not even like... The thing that matters about MP3 blogs is that not only are you reading a recommendation from a credible and completely passionate person, but the music is right there. The link is right there. And when you read something in old media, like, what, how many reviews are they running of bands you've never heard of? And mm -hmm. it's not like, yeah, maybe it's Robert Christgau and maybe that means something to you, but it's not like these these magazines are just packed to the brim with writers that, that even are on your radar for credibility. But when you go to Large Hearted, Boy, or yes. when you go to that's Brooklyn a voice, Vegan, it's a voice that you become familiar with. It's a voice. It's one singular, yeah. identifiable aesthetic, and 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 you at, over time these if you know a lot of these blogs are very well written. You know, you re, you read Gorilla vs. Bear, and these guys are they're very interesting people, and you you start to figure out what they're into, what they're not into, and and you you kind of you adjust, you know, and mm -hmm. and you. I have an enormous, I mean, for me, it's just MP3 blogs. That's what I care about. I don't care about anything else. And that's why we, 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 we're not servicing, I mean, we're going to send the record out to magazines and stuff, but I just don't think any of that stuff is important. The stuff with the print ads, I think sometimes, maybe more than almost any other medium, maybe, print ads are a way of the industry talking to itself. Of course. And it's a way of you basically throwing a little lumber around to show and, that you're putting money behind somebody. And, and it's a way of kind of showing where they figure in the, in the pecking order, yes. how big's the ad. And, we, and it's for the, the ego of the artist. And, and we also know that there's a kickback scheme with these things, right? You run a, a, a full page ad in CMJ Monthly. I mean, talk about 
who fucking cares? All this stuff is dead, man. It doesn't, people may be st still running this route, but it's completely gone. And, um, and there's gonna be a, there's, there has to be some, you know, some quid pro quo of like, okay, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll consider you for the cover next month or, yeah. you know, we'll feature you. But it, it is, it's sort of an unstated cost of doing business. I think it's, you get, it's you, stated. You get noticed more? It's like, almost think, like lobbying? I think it's clearly, listen, this is totally corrupt. We were talking about end caps and, yeah. you know, we're above a virgin here and all this stuff is a, it's a scam beyond a scam. It's as, it's as romantic as a, as grocery store product placement, you yeah. know, and it's like, once you realize that even in your in your uber hip, hipster indie record store that they're taking the same kickbacks now I understand why man the, the, the revenue stream is thin you know you gotta I get you know I own a recording studio I get emails every week from these bullshit CD manufacturing companies listen if yeah. you give us work we'll give you 10% of all the business and I think oh my god this is what studios do this is horrible Jesus so it's a, it's a, it's a scam kickback world I don't want personally I don't want a part of it. Not because I'm not a capitalist. I am a hyper capitalist. Oh, but, I know you are. But because I've I, seen you, I've seen yeah, you deal with people. Yeah, I, and I've got no problem. I'm an econ major. Mm -hmm. I don't have any problem. But I just think that what's better is again career. Let's have a career business. Let's not have a business yeah. that makes money in two years. You have to have some credibility, and you can't be beholden to all these, you know, sleazy merchants out there, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to be. But so the old model. You know, getting back to w w what you were asking, like, if a band now is putting out a record and not rethinking their press and radio and marketing strategy, and man, all this shit is recoupable, so you better rethink it. You know, when you p when you pay two thousand bucks for a little corner ad in in Magnet or in Nylon, you it's your money, man. That's two grand that you're ne you will never recoup. You know, right. if you keep running ads like that, you'll never recoup. Right. And man. This is built on recouping. I mean, that's how I live, is by recouping well, so on my records. You're running a credit card. You're running the band's credit card. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, this is, at the time that we are recording this, uh, just a few days ago, Steve Jobs from uh, Apple Computer yeah. had kind of an open letter that he put on the yeah. website that he's, he's claiming that he thinks the future of uh, digital music is going to be without DRM. Yeah, it has and, to be. Uh, it's fascinating, though, because I wonder how you as an artist think about that stuff and how you... Because you've been putting your stuff out there. There was a time, I think you stopped doing this because of bandwidth, but there was a time when you could go and download, was it, um, was it, uh, Four Tracker? But there was one of them where you could go and download. Mass the Suicide. Mass Suicide. It, no, it's you still up there. Really? It's not on so my server can, anymore. Okay, but Look. you could go in and download every song on the record in one of three different formats, including 320. Yeah, I just hung up on my friend, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry, just for the... Yeah, yeah, yeah let's, hands. let's, uh... But I, that always that always blew my mind, and I can't tell you how many people I how much bandwidth of yours I ate up by pointing people there. I was like, go download this record. Well, but that was I mean I got to say even today that's pretty brazen. Most of your back catalog it's still, has the, at one time or another been up for. The a thing is, is that that record still sells. Not only does it still get downloaded, you don't feel like it's every, cannibalizing your sales. Listen, I think that you. you no, I just I don't I, I think that it's it's a zero sum game or you you gain. I mean, you get people at shows, you you sell them. You know, we're selling. We sell jour, You know, we're we're like selling journals on the next tour. We have we have this girl Diana that. Potter. Diana, yeah, yeah, Those she's are beautiful. She's brilliant. She takes these mols moleskine notebooks, right? Yeah, and uh, and draws album art. On Hand them. paints all the it's album a covers. Flicker set that we'll link to um, yeah. during the interview. That is beautiful. And you know, there's MGM ending. She has all the covers on them. Yeah. And you know, we're we we have all of our our rare stuff. We sell vinyl on tour. We, I mean, we. We make it up on tour. If I lose money, we make it up on tour. Mm -hmm. I'm very sure you about very, that. You, like a lot of the Barsook artists, is fortunate or works hard to have a very loyal, kind of hard little following. Yeah, not, you, not, not little, but you know what I mean? Yeah, You've that, got, that, exactly. <laughs> you know what? Appreciate that left-handed compliment. You know what? You're doing real good, John. Uh, super. When you get those five or six kids out. <laughs> but no, I guess I just mean to say that you don't seem like you've got a lot of attrition. You seem like you retain a fair number of fans record to record, and maybe a la kind of a They Might Be Giants kind of thing, you've got this group that you can count on to, uh, to turn well, out and buy it, at shows and, and, and to buy it by merch. And I, I mean, I think that that's, that's the name of the game, man. If you, if, you, if, you don't, if you don't go for like lifers, you know, and if you don't try, try to like, I mean, we, we've always just tried to, to, to do things within our, with what, you know, I'm, I never, I haven't done anything that's out of character for what who I am. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I haven't I haven't 
done anything that's like, wow, that's cigarette strange. Ad. Why is he opening up for Pete Yorn? Or, yeah, or yeah, cigarette ad. It doesn't bug me. <laughs> Should we talk money? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, so that's, you know, we're, we're always thinking of, you know, I'm going to be around for a while. I make records. That's all I do. I mean, uh, that's what my skill set is, and I'm not going to stop doing it. So, I'm again, I'm thinking in a, in a very long-term, you know, way that, that probably prevents me from doing herky-jerky strange decisions, you know, in the short term. Well, so, just to wrap up this little piece, when you, uh, what, what role do you see, from your own vantage point, what role do you see digital files in whatever format for sale? I'll just throw it out in general. How, what, you know, you're somebody who's got this reputation for your, your kind of um, handcrafted, you yeah. know, exquisite sound. And, yeah. And so it's interesting, like, you're, but you're very involved in this digital stuff. So what does the digital future hold for you? I mean, that's a good question. I mean, I, I think that you, it's, it's, like, it's like drug use. It's harm reduction, right? That's your model, right? I mean, honestly. Clean needles. Yeah, clean needles. Honestly, there's going to be a very high percentage of your records that are downloaded for free. That's just it. Now, what you can try to do is you can upload very high-res versions of your record, okay, to counter the 128K versions. That's one. That's, neat, that's clean needles right there. Two, you can, you can, you can clearly and... and um, and efficiently be selling product. There's always going to be a percentage of people that want to buy CDs and that want to buy it from iTunes. See, I don't think, just like I don't think that you can reduce the number of, of, of heroin addicts without actually just acknowledging that that's a human need to do drugs. And it's, there's no point to take a moral stand against it. The point is just to, to reduce harm and re reduce, you know, the number of let's say, car break-ins you have in, in your city, you know what I mean? Or the number of overdoses. Let's, let's just accept that this is what's happening and not have this more... I mean, DRM is a moral um, stance. That's why it's so problematic. And it doesn't do, it doesn't do anything. It's stupid. And so it's, it prevents you... It's inconvenient you, for honest people. Yes, and the, and the thing is, is that it doesn't prevent any of the, of the behavior that it's trying to... So it'd be better if you actually just accepted the behavior and, and instead tried to... Um, I mean, listen, Put iTunes... Put a cash register on it? Yes, somehow. Yeah. Somehow. You know what I mean? And, and be, be smart about it. I mean, the thing is, is that we don't lose money. We make money. And we make more money every year, clearly. It's clear to me that when we do the... I just did my taxes, and I'm thinking, Jesus, like, so I'm supposed to be getting hit by these downloads? I know how much stuff is downloaded for mm -hmm. me. I know what... I know the numbers on Pixel, man. We, we see that stuff. We know, we know how There's many copies are... that you can hire go out and give you stats. That's great. Watching the P2Ps. That's great. That's cr and that's interesting. And the thing is, is that there's a part of me that says music's going to be free. The price of content of, 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 of any art is just going to go down. And that's competition. And that's beautiful, yeah. man. That's a beautiful thing. As long, as, as, long as it stays off that using it. Yeah. The thing's going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. John Vander Slice, uh, he, he would like you to, he wants you to smoke, uh, steal music, and do heroin. Yeah. Uh, He's and I don't, I don't do, I, I don't do any of those, but I'm that? fine with the, but anyone fine else. Doing it. Isn't he adorable? He's like, he's like a muppet. You want to just put him in your pocket? He's so cute. Uh, he's a very interesting guy, and I, I think the stuff that he's doing uh, with his music and the internet is fascinating. I think it's a lot of stuff that a lot of artists are starting to realize is the way to go. John's got a fantastic relationship with his fans, and I think that increasingly that's where the future is. That you, you kind of can't rely on uh, big print ads and and big push campaigns to get everybody uh, in your corner. You really got to be out there and interacting. I think John's doing that really well. Come back and visit with us again. We're going to have uh, more interviews uh, with John Vanderslice. We're going to talk about how he does his uh, email. And uh, I can just say that as John's uh, personal Macintosh guru for the last three years, he has done some very squirrely things with his computer that uh, we're going to talk about. So uh, we'll see you again soon.